good morning or good afternoon at the case may be my name is sosale mohana i am an maths teacher who has taught maths for over 50 years in three continents and three countries like india in asia kenya in africa and england in europe i've just retired a couple of years ago and i thought i should use my experience to record and deliver a number of lessons based on the british curriculum for a level maths so the students who want to reinforce their learning can use it i have a masters in maths of course way back in 1969 i completed my masters in maths and then i did my teacher training in 1974 i've been working since 1969 till 2019 clear 50 years so i hope these lessons are useful to you and you are welcome to watch them and then with each lesson there will always be a document which covers whatever has been done in the lesson so you could use that perhaps as your own notes or maybe to go over what has been taught during the lesson i hope you enjoy the lesson hello there we are now moving on from the first topic where we talked of rational numbers and proofs and irrational numbers on to equations and the most important equation in the life of a student at gcse and first part of a level is the quadratic equation you know i'm just reading something from the web which is interesting many a time you see we teachers also make the topic of quadratic equation as boring as we can meaning oh we just said ax squared plus bx plus c equal to 0 is the quadratic equation y equal to ax squared plus bx plus c is the quadratic function and then uh, we solve the equation blah 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 give you the formula or maybe teach you how to do completing the squares everything is brilliant but it is dry because why are we learning it what the his i mean how did it all develop what happened i think i want to spend uh, at least one or two lessons going back to the history of quadratic equation how it has play, played a very important role even in the modern days to do that i'm just reading from the web uh 101 uses of a quadratic equation so before i do that let me just write down so topic 2 basic algebra and then today i will talk more about history of quadratic equations i don't know how many lessons i'm going to take so i'm not going to number them as 1 2 3 today i think i will see i'll show you what happened recently remember when compared to the time when square root of 2 was proved to be rational by somebody which i'll come to a bit later <coughs> which about 450 500 bc to today which is 2021 ad 2003 is more closer so it's comparatively recent let me just read in 2003 the national union of teachers the quadratic in during a meeting the quadratic equation was held aloft to the nation as an example of the cruel torture inflicted by mathematicians like teachers like me on poor unsuspecting school children like you intrigued by this accusation the quadratic equation accepted a starring role on prime time radio where it was questioned by a formidable interviewer and later on it became so intense the discussions that the discussions on the moral health of the modern world 
to the problem that the quadratic equation was useless, maths was useless, and that no one wanted to study maths anyway. So why bother teaching quadratic equations? Teach it to only those people who want to learn maths. Why do you want to impose it on the poor GCSE students? Concerned, lest the dangerous admission by quadratic equation remains unchallenged, the vital importance of the equation to the survival of the UK was debated in the British House of Commons. In fact, if you go back to, I'm not too sure, September 2006, if you go back to the Hansard, Hansard is a record of all deliberations, a true record of all deliberations, the speeches, the discussions, the debates that go on in the British Parliament. I have read it. Yeah, there is a big concern about quadratic equations raised by one of the opposition uh, members and the then Minister of Culture and Education did give a response and thank God when it was put to vote, common sense prevailed and we continued with quadratic equations. Otherwise, today, maybe you might have been off happier for not having to do computing squares and so on, but most of us teachers would be very frustrated because without that, we would not be able to go further into various other aspects of maths, which are very important foundation for university work. And uh, so if you are interested, you can read this article. 101, I'll just put it here in case anyone wants. 101 users, do have a Google search, users of a quadratic equation. This is the title of the article written by professors Chris Budd and Professor Chris Sanguin. <coughs> These two professors, I'm just quoting because I shouldn't quote wrong their names and their accreditations. So therefore, Professor Chris Bird is a professor of applied mathematics in the Department of Mathematical Sciences at the University of Bath and he is the chair of the mathematics at the Royal Institution in London. Professor Chris Sanguin is a member of the staff in the School of Mathematics and Statistics at the University of Birmingham. He is a research fellow in the Learning and Teaching Support Network Center for Maths, Stats and Operational Research. They have recently written the popular mathematics book, Mathematics Galore, which was produced by OU, published by OUP. So, it's a very interesting article. If you want to know more about this story, you can read it. And whatever I'm going to talk is based on this particular article. Because to be honest, I wasn't aware of. In fact, I'm grateful for these two professors. So, bringing it out, so many things which I didn't know. So, perhaps. It's a pity, of course, I've retired. Otherwise, uh, if I were to go back to school and teach quadratic equations again, I would perhaps start with uh, the introduction I gave you today, reading from here. I may not have read, but I would have mentioned. And then talk about uh, how it all started and how today's your A1, A2, A3, A4, A5 papers how they all lead back to what was done in 500 BC. Interesting, isn't it? Let us see how they are linked. So, going back to, uh, of course, that if you are interested, you can make a note of it because that's not in my, and this particular lesson or any lesson where I talk of history will not have any handout. So, if you are interested in learning about it, Please remember that and do a Google search. That's if you are interested, obviously. Otherwise, I'll give you a synopsis of what is happening. So, let's look at the fool's cap. You see, the fool's cap, it starts with A0. You know, 
you see, if you were to be a paper merchant, you would have a paper A0, up A0, then A1, then A2, then A3, A4, A5 papers. You have heard of all these sizes, right? So, therefore, A0, I can't remember the dimensions. It is always, it's a rectangular paper with the length bigger than the width. Of course, it's a question of saying. I mean, the way it's put in the, uh, it's not in uh, what you call uh, um, port portrait. It's not in landscape. The aspect is portrait. So, I can't remember this value, so I'll put it 841 and then 1189. Right? Then uh, the A1 is 594, 841. So 594 and 841. I think it's better I make a table. It's easier because otherwise, you know, I'm squeezing in numbers. So let me put the sizes on the side. I need them for something. I need them for something. So therefore, length. Width. So I've got A naught, A one, A two, A three. Have I gone up to A five, A four? I haven't gone to A five. So you can continue and go on. Uh, the length of an A naught paper is eleven eighty nine to eight forty one. 1189, 841, then uh, 841, 594. Some of you will already recognize something there. 594, 420. Okay. And then 420, 297. Are you noticing a pattern there? And then uh, 297, 210. So, these papers are rectangular in shape. The length is more than the width and they are all similar. What do you mean by similar? Similar means uh, if two figures are similar, the corresponding angles are equal. More importantly, the sides are proportional. In other words, if the first one is 12 by 8, a similar one would be 24 by 16. It can't be 12 by 16, can't be similar to 12 by 8. So 24 by 16 would perhaps be similar to, uh, will be similar to 48 by 32. But a 12 by 16 cannot be similar to 10 by 5 because the ratios are not the same. So all these shapes are similar, rule number one. And each particular size, for example, if this is A0, yeah, this is 841, 1189, you cut the length by half. Then, after you cut it, this one obviously will be 500, what, half of 1189? Almost 1200, isn't it? 590 is 1,594.5. And that is, the, so after you cut it, you turn, you turn it this way. So this is A1, which is 594.5 and 841. What you do is cut it again. Half of 841 is 420.5. So 594.5. Is bigger than, remember, I need a portrait aspect. I don't need landscape. So if you turn it round, so your A2 paper will be 420.5, which is, of course, we can't do 0.5, so we take up 594. And then this will be 594. Can you see those things there? Then you have that. So that becomes 297 by 420 again. So that is 297, that is 420, that's your A3. All are in millimeters, by the way. 
everything is in millimeters. In fact, a knot size is a one meter square paper. In other words, is the total area of an A naught paper is one meter squared, one meter by one meter. Okay. Now, where does this lead to? Can do you believe that the concept of a quadratic went back to the Babylonians and the Sumerians way back in 3000 or 3500? Of course, they didn't use X and Y, but they knew that the area of a field depended upon its length, assuming the width was constant. Of course, they knew uh, or in fact it said the Sumerians knew that how do you increase the yield of your crop. So, what you do is double the dimension. So, remember if you had uh, a side x and 1. So, the a area of that is x squared. Yeah? x and x, a square field. Then, suppose you double the dimension, it becomes 2x and 2x. As you know, it is 4x squared. So, if the yield here is 1x squared, you can get 4 times the yield by doubling the dimensions. The Sumerians and the Babylonians knew this intuitively. And, of course, they use the formula, obviously, uh, is area, therefore, is proportional to the square of the sides. And they might have used a different symbols, but the same thing. And then if M was the yield per unit square, then they said, the total amount of yield they can get or crop they can get would be mx squared. This was the very first quadratic that was derived way back in 3000 BC by the Sumerians. But then, of course, they didn't have the concept of a negative number. They did everything by trial and error. But then they also had, not everybody had a square field. So if they had a triangular field, something like this, what they did was, and they knew area of a triangular field is half the area of a corresponding rectangle. So they gave the dimensions 2x, ax and b. They called the height as 2x. This is AX and that is B. So you know that one is half times 2X times AX or AX squared. And this one is half times 2X times B, which is BX. So C equal to AX squared plus BX. So if they had a triangular field, they called one as AX and one as B by trial and error, meaning trial and improvement, they were able to, trial and improvement, they were able to figure, they didn't know negative values. So they said, remember in GCSU people did it, given that x squared plus 4x minus 6 equal to 0 has a root between x equal to 1 is negative, x equal to 2 is positive. Between 1 and 2, find the root correct to two decimal places. Remember GCSE? Then you would make a table and say between 1 and 2, then between 1 and 1.5, then between this and that and this and that. They use the same method, of course. They didn't have a concept of a negative number. So they would. So this is how quadratic equations were the very first equation man could think of. Even though they didn't call it as quadratic equation, they may not have used the square and so on, but the concept of a quadratic is nothing new and it has been useful mainly in areas way back. I'll, st I'll still have to come back to that. Wait, wait, I'm coming back. I'm not digressing. So then what they did was, 
there was, now I am now coming down to about 500 BC. Pythagoras has already found out his theorem. Square on the hypotenuse equals some of the squares on the other two sides or as you always remember, a square equal to b square plus c square. For some reason, it has to be always a, b, c. I still don't understand why it can't be x, y, z or p, q, r or donkey, monkey, cat. As long as donkey, monkey and cat have unit lengths, have lengths in terms of a standard unit and or the three sides of a right angle triangle. Anyway, so what happened was, uh, if you remember in proof by contradiction, we talked about this. They realized that square root 2 cannot be rational. It has to be rational. So there was, a, I found out the name. I've done my research. He passes of metopone thumb. He was a Greek mathematician, a disciple of Pythagoras, and he was the first one to prove that square root of 2 is not rational. In other words, it cannot be expressed as a fraction in its lowest terms. And of course, he came, with, so I think 1.414 to so 14142 divided by 10,000. That was the value perhaps he arrived at. I'm not too sure what value he arrived at, but he proved square root of 2 is irrational. But remember, way back in those days, Greek civilization had flourished. They were the leading civilization in the world. And then, and also, they were uh, highly religious. I don't know if you people have uh, had a chance to read something about Greek mythology. I think any youngster at A level should read uh, Iliad and Odyssey by Homer. Uh, all of you, I know, if I now, I know, but the moment I say it, you will click. Troy, you have seen the video or you have seen the movie Troy, where, you know, Helen of Troy, and that is the whole story is a big saga, one of the greatest epics, Greek epics, Greek epics rather, written by Homer. And in that, they talk of, you know, the, uh, their mythology had lots of gods, you know, you had the god of wind, the god of thunder, Poseidon, and then, you know, you have the god of the seas, and you have god of gods, Zeus. And they believe mathematics, they believed, is perfection personified. So, mathematics is a representation of God. Meaning that all numbers, remember till then, they believed have to be rational. P over Q, there is no other choice. It has to be rational. It cannot be rational. That was the belief, that was the faith. And it's a perfect one because that's what maths proves. And so, it's so much so that it was considered a blasphemy to disprove what was the accepted truth. I'm saying accepted truth. It's not the actual truth, but the accepted truth that any number you can think of is rational. And when this gentleman proved it to be irrational, I understand the whole society was shocked and they thought the gods would be angry because it's blasphemy. It is, you know, defying the laws of religion, defying the faith. So much so that, you know, they thought the god of God Zeus would perhaps send them untold misery and uh, hardship. So they prayed to him, I understand. They sacrificed 1,000 cows or bulls. Uh, again, I go back to Homer's Iliad and Odyssey. You have to do sacrifices to appease the God. The same thing we believe in. Um, the same thing is believed in the ancient Hindu religion of the Aryans as well. Sacrifice played a very important role. 
but not an animal i mean there it was an animal sacrifice here sometimes it's animal sometimes it's plant food so i mean i'm not going into religion please so what i'm trying to say is so they believe that and this gentleman he passes who ended up proving that root 2 is not rational some people believe some historians believe he was mentally so tortured by people and their reaction that he committed suicide some other people believe he was murdered so just for defying whatever was the belief in math the man gave up his life in fact the authors uh, the professors i talked to you about professor uh, chris bull and uh, chris sanguine in their article jokingly mention that if you discover something be careful you might be murdered it may not happen i mean i'm just joking please so what i'm trying to say is so what has this now i told all this story and I, i'm going here and there i just started with a4 a3 paper suddenly i went into quadratic equation now i have come back to root 2 in what way is this connected to all that we'll talk about it in the next lesson thank you very much hello i want to take this opportunity to propose a vote of thanks i would like to thank vivid innovations private limited and commerce forum for uh, so generously giving up their uh, studio and the facilities and the services of their uh, technicians to record all these videos for free i think that needs to be acknowledged and appreciated thank you very much and my special thanks to mr nitin mahadevpa mr nishant guruswami and mr sadan kumar dn for all their help and assistance in getting these videos ready uploaded and launched thank you very much